And we're live. All right. Welcome to the Blog Talk Garage. I'm your brother, Link. I am brother Embed, and don't blog like my brother. And I'm brother Click. Click to Link and Embed. <laughs> and uh, welcome to the session. Just to, a little bit of explanation why we have... Um, tools with us and we're talking about garages and stuff. Uh, not everybody may have followed the great uh, NPR show uh, Car Talk, uh, which uh, a bunch of uh, cantankerous Bostonians spent more time goofing around than talking about cars, but it was kind of a great metaphor for how, um, not the, the weird part, but about how uh, they people would call in with problems with their cars and they would give them the answers. So. We kind of picked up that metaphor um, last fall when the three of us worked together on uh, Connected Courses, uh, the first uh, DML um, project that uh, we brought in all these people and to talk about this idea of people working together in their own space on a blog but connecting it through a central course. So we kind of felt like blog talk was a nice metaphor for your, um, people as they're learning to um, deal with the mechanics of blogging and also sort of like the the ideas of it and so we want you to feel free at any time to pull your blog into our garage and I, I'm Alan Levine and I'll probably be the me mechanic most there on duty because my other brothers are busy with some other uh, car repairs right now uh, but I will be uh, following very closely the forums which we'll show you about and we'll try to respond quickly to questions as you get used to uh, blogging but as a little bit of introduction, I uh, just want to have us each uh, talk a little bit maybe about um, why we're even talking about uh, this blogging thing and why we're trying to wrap it in this aspect of uh, people who are doing research. Why would researchers blog? Because blogging is for you know cats and collections of you know sewing dolls and things. And uh, I don't think it's true. And uh, so um, I've been using blogs since about 2003 as, as a means of trying to help people um, learn how they can uh, express themselves on a web without having necessarily to learn a lot of technical aspects and the blog is a great uh, powerful uh, platform and for me personally uh, in my work in education uh, just keeping like an ongoing uh, narration of things I'm working on and thinking about and stuff I think is important and stuff I think is not important has been just incredibly invaluable to me as my own record that I can go back and look at and find out. I could tell you what I was thinking about or working on um, in, say, January 2006 or um, the fall of you know 2012 because everything is chronologically organized and I can search. But more than that, it's allowed me to connect to uh, people that you see here uh, on the screen because um, you end up not just writing for yourself, but you end up communicating with others through comments and then you start reading what they're writing about. So I want to pass it over maybe to Howard to maybe talk about now why do you think this is important, Howard? Well, you know, personally, I've, I have used it uh, as kind of an outboard brain when working, working on projects, uh, a way to, to write things that are maybe incomplete thoughts that aren't of publishing quality that you're not going to edit over and over again but which I have kind of available as a combination of uh, spare parts to put something larger together and also just a, a way to think aloud for a public and I make a distinction between an audience and a public. An audience are a passive recipients and a public they can respond to you. They can link to you, they can criticize you, they can they can give you helpful comments in, in, in the threads and quite often it's pretty interesting how kind of thinking in public that way with a public can help you refine those thoughts before you get to creating something publishable. Uh, it's also a, a connection to a community so I, I became uh, uh, evangelized by the DS-106 uh, way of doing things a couple of years ago and and started asking my students requiring students undergraduates and graduate students at Stanford to create their own WordPress platform and start blogging before our first class and that was about giving them a place 
to have an individual reflective voice about what we were studying together that would give the, the, the rest of us an opportunity to have kind of a window into who they were. You're going to form a learning community. It really helps to not only kind of think aloud for your public, but to watch them think aloud and, and, and comment on them. But also, increasingly, for my students and, and for uh, DML research fellows um, and, and anyone else who's getting kind of started now, who's going to be stretching out into the future, whether it's blogs or some other form, you are going to be communicating in public in some ways. It's not all going to be your peer-reviewed journal. This is kind of the way things are going to be done for good reason. And I think it's also important in terms of retaining some control over the, the, the online platform. It's not just about accepting what, what the, the little windows uh, that Facebook and Twitter and and others give you. This is a, a, a way for you to not just express yourself but to learn to be a publisher and take control of the medium. It's not just about thinking aloud online. It's about having your, your hands on, that's, and that's the, the garage metaphor, having your hands on the mechanics of being a publisher online. Whether WordPress is the future, and it certainly is the near future, um, being able to do that yourself is e extremely useful and empowering. Yeah, to build on what my brother says, because I'm a big fan of my brother, is, you know, I spent a lot of time at the University of Mary Washington, where I'm an educational technologist, is working with faculty across just about every discipline to think about, you know, what's the relevance of digital media in scholarship research in general. And it's funny, you know, I would say in 2007 and 2008, when I kind of started pushing for faculty to get their own spaces and build their own stuff, there was a lot of resistance and a lot of questions as to why. I mean, it's not going to count as part of my tenure package. It's going to kind of, and for some that's still true, but less and less am I hearing that, that pushback as to why. Um, I found uh, uh, one of the faculty I work with, Meredith Matthews, pointed me to just a really good example. There's a blog of early Americanists called The Junto, which is a great group, group blog of, I don't know how many, maybe 10, maybe more, early Americanists from schools all over the country, and I might be some from Canada or Europe as well, where they're actually sharing, and they're in various, some are tenured, some are new faculty, and they're sharing on a regular basis. It's one of those old, scarred, old school group blogs where it's kind of like full of vitality, and they're sharing, they're going back and forth, they have the kind of brackets for early Americanists, kind of like playing on the NCAA double, uh, tournament. And they're just having a blast. They're doing their work. They're connecting with scholars in their field. And like, at, like um, Howard said, which I think is really important, they're not only getting their hands dirty by working together, but they're also building a broader community that oftentimes, traditional publishing, doesn't allow that kind of crossover um, in real space as you incrementally build towards a larger published paper or book. And I've just really been blown away. At Mary Washington, we have, we have 240 faculty, uh, full-time faculty, and now close to 90 of them are, have their own domain, have their own web hosting, and install their own WordPress, and basically are up and running controlling whether it be a portfolio, whether it be a research site, whether it be a course site, whether it be a shared group blog with kind of like the Junto, that they have the ability to say to their colleagues, whether at UMW or beyond, hey, let's do something like this. It's not that hard. I can put it together in the morning, and we can start building a kind of, uh, for however long time, a space where we can collaborate on a particular thing that we're building. Um, a great example of this at Mary Washington is Steve Harris is talking about, um, you know, urbanity in Russia. And there's scholars literally from all over the world that are working with him on a site that he has here at Mary Washington that has become a group blog, it's become a conference blog, it's become a place where they publish the conference proceedings. I mean, he's basically, to reiterate what Howard said, is controlling the vertical and the horizontal, right? The means of production are in his control, 
right? He doesn't just buy the car. He fixes the car, right? He doesn't just drive the car. He changes the oil. He doesn't just find bad analogies. He does <laughs> things. That's it. That's Big good. <laughs> We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna hopefully get everybody into that level of, of excitement. The, 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 the kind of interesting thing is uh, for people who maybe haven't gone down this path before, or maybe still kind of have their arms crossed trying to figure this out. I don't know about this thing. Is um, we can talk about it and give you lots of examples and um, say all the benefits of it, but until you have your own experience, it's probably not going to make much sense. So uh, this is kind of a, an on ramp experience for people who um, either have done some sort of blogging before and um, may, maybe haven't, but it's a chance for you to try out some new wheels if we continue the analogy uh, there. And uh, I know in dealing with uh, a couple of my projects recently with doing something similar, trying to work with academics, um, asking them, when you ask people to share um, their work online or their research, the first thing is like, I'm not giving away my research. And so we're not asking people to give away anything. We're asking you to sort of use this as uh, a way, as Howard said, uh, of outward brain thinking, which is uh, an expression I always go back to um, in probably one of the first blog posts I read by Cory Doctorow. Um, and thinking about it sort of as, as a notebook, um, as a way of just uh, writing about what's interesting. Um, in terms of research, you know, one of the things is in um, education, a lot of things we work on are producing this final production. You know, we're working on the dissertation, we're working on the paper, and um, we lose track of that whole process of how you got there. So what were the ideas that maybe didn't pan out, or maybe what were some of the dead ends? There's still value in things that you tried and maybe didn't necessarily pan out. Uh, and what we probably can talk about in our experience, if you haven't gotten already, um, by doing this in a public space, you almost create like a, a serendipity potential energy field where you can connect with other scholars and, and other people uh, you may not have through other means who will uh, contribute ideas and resources uh, to your work. So that's the idea of us creating this thing called a common. So we're going to try to draw in people working in two different strands of research and mingle their ideas together in this common space so you can not only share what you're doing, but see what other people are doing. And we are going to get to, uh, in a few minutes, sort of more of the mechanic things for people who want to do that. Uh, but I thought we'd also maybe just talk a little bit about our individual um, experiences in uh, bringing new people into this, because all three of us have taught these courses that we call connected courses that involve students setting up and creating their own individual blogs, where they do all their work in their own space that they manage, rather than putting it in a centralized system. And the beauty of that is um, it's theirs all along. It's theirs when the course is done. It doesn't disappear. And they really get to shape everything that they want to or not want to include in their space. So you get to make all the decisions about what goes into your blog. But when you're thrown into this for the first time and you see that first empty space and it says something like, hello world, and there's like 15 buttons up the side, it's a little bit uh, bewildering, so it takes time to sort of get your, um, you know, if, if it's a bicycling analogy, you know, it's more than just, you know, popping off the training wheels and coasting. Um, it takes a little bit of iterative practice to get the hang of this. So, um, and in the beginning, um, generally people, they want to figure out how to make the blog look good, and that's certainly important because we want your uh, blogs and your cars to be shiny and, and to turn heads when they go down the street. But the thing about blogs is that um, the real meat of it is actually the stuff you write because the information is stored separately from the way it is formatted. So we can always change and work on the appearance. The more important things are getting into a regular writing habit, um, including links to relevant resources and uh, using media. And, and most importantly, be really creative with your titles. Um, we get really bored with boring titles. Howard, maybe talk about yeah, your experience. And, and also, you know, I think that's kind of a, a general rule of thumb for the the web today is people uh, find you through the titles of your blog posts, 
and they also determine whether they're going to give more than a fraction of a second of attention to what you're writing by the title of your blog post. So it's, that's part of the, the thinking aloud process is to think of a, a, a name for what it is you're going to reflect on and I wouldn't spend very long on it. I think part of the, the idea is how, how do you do that quickly? Um, and and the idea that this is a work in progress, I think, is really, really um, important. You can customize it, um, as my, my brother pointed out, as you go along. You don't have to get it picture perfect when you get started. And you don't know where the, the you don't have to know where the blog post is going to end up when you get started. That's the, the great beauty of this. You know, it's uh, one thing I know about is uh, writing a book is that you, you got to have a pretty good idea about what the book is about when you get started. But you never, if you're doing your job, really know what the book is about until you're about a third of the way through it. You're immersed in it then you can see a lot of the landscape that you really couldn't see before on a smaller scale. That's what a blog post is about. Um, I'm going to reflect today on what it's like to get started as a blogger. That's all I know. And get started and, 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 and let it flow. Um, you, can, you can edit it for sure, but I think part of this is a kind of getting started practice. It's something to do it like for a morning writing uh, before you get started with your other writing for the day. It's uh, so many of us think with our fingertips. Just get started on your post and see where it goes. Thank you, brother in bed. I'm, I'm uh, hoping that brother, uh, who is he? Link <laughs> or click is out there. His camera's frozen. I, I would, um, I'll You're skip. <laughs> I'm having an identity crisis. <laughs> click. I'm quick. <laughs> I'm the we're serious so, one. We're so alike, we, we, get, we, get, we merge identities sometimes. Right. It's like mind meld. I mean, speaking of blogging and mind meld, actually, to make a beautiful transition, I mean, I found professionally that when I entered the blogosphere in 2000, late 2005, early 2006, I was really getting uh, professional help about work I wanted to do, about what other people have done. And, it was just a very valuable tool for me to have as part of the work I do um, as an educational technologist. I mean, I just found it like I would do it. I blogged a little bit before that because my family was over, my wife's family was over in Italy, and so we wanted to share images of my kids. So I started out as a blog father, as they said. Um, I quickly transitioned to be a professional blogger where, in professional I mean blogging about the work I do regularly in order so that other people could feedback on what I'm doing and my ideas, and I think my work has become infinitely better. Still is not very good, but it's become infinitely better than what it would have been based on the feedback, the support, um, and the, the kind of sense of knowing there were other people in my network. And that's the thing. It's like when we talk to faculty here, it's about building a network, and that could be a professional network, that could be a personal network, and that could be based on your interests, and the two could blur, the two could be totally separate, like nothing you do with family, and that's all happening somewhere else. Um, that's really the first steps into just understanding why is it I'm blogging? What do I want out of it? And I don't always think it's going to be that exchange-minded. I mean, you might want to go into it like that, but you'll find the thing that strikes me is you'll always find, oddly enough, someone's reading. I, I, I just still... My mind is blown. A, a faculty member just started her blog like a month ago, and she gets a comment from another faculty at Stanford talking about her post. Like, like where else does that happen in such a distributed kind of um, almost you know, an indirect way? And I think by putting yourself out there, the thing that I found, and this has been true for me, and it won't be true for everyone, but it's definitely been true for me, is that everything I put out, I've gotten back. Um, manifestly far more and I think that's that's I constantly remind myself because I'm not always as religious as I should be about sharing those thoughts I've had I do a fairly good job of it but every time I miss one and I'm not able to share it out I know that's a lost opportunity uh, for the little bit of time I spend 
reflecting quickly, and it doesn't have to be, and that's part of getting into writing blogs and reading blogs, it doesn't have to be a full frame thought, right? Sometimes it could be a snippet of where you are. And when I first started reading blogs, that would disorientate me. Because I'd step into someone's blog, maybe I read Alan's blog or Howard's blog, and I'd read this thing, and it was this partial thing about, you know, NMC and, you know, Second Life or whatever, and I didn't know what either were. But after going back to it over time, I would get a fuller sense of what was happening in this world in this period of time. And I think what's rich about it is once you get into reading it and you follow a certain amount of people, is like you're following people and lives and ideas as much as you are following your discipline. And I think the way in which the blogosphere can humanize the work we do is something that's constantly overlooked with a lot of the kind of rhetoric around technology and DU. I found it to be some of the most humanizing and life affirming work I've seen in my own uh, network. And I think that to me is why I come back to it, is because I've had experiences where it's really given me much, but I also have spent a ton of time <laughs> investing in it. Like, it's an investment. Like, to do it right, there's no two ways about it. Don't let anyone fool you, right? Like, it's an investment. And, you know, if you're going to really think that I'm going to do scholarship and I'm going to change myself into this notion of a digital scholar and a connected scholar, well then it's going to demand a certain amount of your time and energy. And I think you'll get a lot more out of it than you put into it, but it still will demand something of you. So I just, you know, I want to be clear about that because it's not like, oh yeah, you go publish that one first blog and, you know, you'll get a MacArthur Fellowship and you'll be a genius grant. No, <laughs> it's sweat blood. It's just digital sweat and blood. Yeah, and you know, I want, I want to add a little teaspoon of honey to that, that medicine there, is that uh, you really leverage what it is you're, you're thinking about anyway. Um, uh, uh, Brother Link mentioned uh, you put it out there, and it takes some work to do that. It takes some commitment to do that, but then it comes back to you, multifold. That's always been true for me, and... What I found from the very beginning is, look, I'm, I'm looking around at stuff that interests me. When I find something that interests me, the marginal additional cost of sharing that with the world is so small um, compared with people see that, they know it's useful, they understand what I'm interested in. They see that I've put something out there. They want to reciprocate knowing what I'm interested in. They're going to send stuff to me. I get 10 times back what I put out there, and what I put out there is a result of what I'm, I'm looking for anyway. W when I talk uh, with students about the different rhetorics of blogging, you know there's just not one way to, to do it. There's uh, a lot of different ways to do it, and I uh, ask them to think about trying all the different ways. One is simply to link share. You find a link what you write about that link is why why should anybody be interested in in spending any of their attention clicking on that link and and seeing it well you got a public you know what interests them you know what interested you in a few sentences you can put some context to that link and you know maybe in the comment thread people are going to add some things but in general people who are interested in the same thing that you're interested in are going to find you it's a little bit like uh, search engine optimization for uh, uh, individual thinker. Think, think out loud and people who are looking for that kind of thinking are, are, are going to find you. You can also just reflect. You don't have to have any kind of links. You don't have to offer anything to anybody. It's just it's a way of reflecting on your reading. People do blogs that are just reading notes. You can, you can put a reflection and a link or a couple of links and then talk about the connection between them and do connected writing. You can uh, you can criticize something. You know, there's a, a lot of bad rhetoric around things that I um, am passionate about, and sometimes you want to link to something that's bad and explain to people why it's why it's bad. Um, you know, critical in the in the best sense. Or you could advocate. You you got a cause. Uh, you want others to get their students to blog or whatever your cause is, here's an opportunity to get out there and advocate it. And the others who share that advocacy are go going to share what you've, you have put out there as well. 
That's really great. Good advice, you know, and I, in terms of thinking about what the heck do I write about on this blog space, that's that's one of the first things you're going to sort through in, in the first couple of weeks. Uh, some I, I go back a lot to our colleague Gardner Campbell when, when he teaches us to, the idea is like you think, oh, I, I'm reading this entire paper and I've got to surmise it and get the whole like synthesis of it and, and, and analyze it. And, and often it's better, as Howard um, describes, uh, Gardner calls it the nugget, like, one paragraph or one sentence that, that jumps out at you as something that you agree with, you find interesting, or you disagree with. So it's, it's almost paying attention as you're doing your research and reading and about just going about in the world, finding things that you almost have somewhat of a, you register an internal uh, physical reaction to or emotional reaction to. And the great thing is in the blog, you know, it's a good space to look for things maybe outside of maybe what you think of the scope of your research. So, you know, I was just working on something in my apartment a couple weeks ago. I had the TV on in the background, um, and there was this real cheesy science fiction movie, A Forbidden Planet, and I hadn't seen it before. And it had this great, like, moment in the center about this whole idea about this giant brain that ran everything. And it actually, you know, I made a connection. I can't remember what it was, but... You find these um, metaphors um, in the world about you that probably relate to the research that you're doing. And so that's another avenue um, that often I do is I try to look for things that maybe um, are, are, don't seem to be connected at first to what I'm thinking about or interested, and then I try to bring it back in. Yeah, I do. I think that's good advice. And one of the things I've been struggling with, and you've written about this a lot, Alan, and I'm doing stuff on different spaces now that more than I have before. So whether you're posting Flickr images, YouTube videos, however you're doing it, like there's a way to understand blogging kind of in a more umbrella way, as a way of putting stuff out there, framing it as um, Howard noted, with whether it be a commentary, and sharing it. And so someone, um, Lewis Haight, I think, brought up the idea of, you know, Tumblr. Like Tumblr is one interesting kind of aesthetic of the blog, an approach to the blog, whether that be reblogging something and then commenting on it um, or building on it, like maybe not the like or the retweet idea of just, you know, kind of, I don't want to say mindlessly because you can make an argument for both, but like the idea of adding something to that conversation and then also pushing it out and linking to other people and that linking to other people, I found when I started framing that for faculty and even for students, like, when you link to someone else's blog, their permalink, their space, there's a magical connection there that happens. And it automatically is like reaching out, like E.T., right? Touching, like, boop, you know, you see the red light, you know, and the, the, the bike goes over the moon, this way a car, boop, right? And I do think there's something that really happens when you let people know, A, you're reading. Um, they see that you're reading them. You now have someone who you consider maybe part of your network, or at least that idea. And that's a, that's a powerful thing, and it's called a trackback. And it's one of the things that I actually took me a while to say, is this spam? What the hell is this happening? Like, who's linking to me? And what does that mean? And I think it's one of the kind of embedded magic of um, the blogosphere and this idea. And I think the blog, despite all the work I do in other places, I still come back to the blog as my home online. And that may or may not be how you feel about it, but there's a lot attached to that. You know, it's interesting. Anyway, that's it. Welcome home to your blog, Jim. <laughs> I, I'm going to um, divert a minute. We're going to go uh, inside to the DML site so we give um, folks a sense about what we're, we're aiming for here. And then we'll talk a little bit about um, some things about uh, choosing a blog platform. So I'm going to move into screen share mode, but feel free, brothers, to jump in at, at any time uh, just in case... Um, I happen to uh, mess up, and we're going to get a little bit of inception effect here until I shift my tabs. Uh, well, in shifting his tabs, I just want to point out that I, I think one of the most important skills to learn about connected learning or connected scholarship is this, um, this way of signaling what you are interested in and what you are doing, um, not only to inform your public, but to, to attract people who can collaborate with you and send you information and the hashtag is certainly a great sing, uh, uh, signal. Using categories and tags on your blogs, um, using um, good titles for your, your blog posts, 
you know, those are skills that they've come along. They've become incredibly important. It's what the web is all about. They haven't really penetrated into the academy yet. They don't, they don't teach you when you're writing your dissertation to know how to signal. But uh, believe me, it, it's probably as important as much of what you are required to do traditionally and undoubtedly more important than a lot of it. Excellent. Thank you. So if uh, you're watching my screen, you should be seeing the new uh, DML Commons site, which is uh, dmlcommons.net. And of course, we have these beautiful banners for things that are important coming up. But um, what happens here at the bottom, which looks like a lot of stuff, is uh, we call this the flow. So there are two inputs of content that are going to come in through the activity of everybody participating. Um, one are people who use Twitter, and we're going to encourage you um, uh, to use a Twitter account and anything that includes a pound a DML Commons hashtag uh, will show up here uh, with the little uh, Twitter icon. So there's one from the CL Alliance. Uh, there's also these ones with a pencil on those and those uh, reference blog posts and we'll see more of those. So right now we're seeing a lot of tweets in the stream. The front page is like the fire hose so it's not necessarily the best place to sort of like digest everything, but it's sort of a, a now of what's going on. And it's kind of gives you a sense about the, the hub of activity. And so in order to do that through Twitter, you're going to create a Twitter account. And if you don't know how to do that, don't have any experience, it's pretty easy. Just drop by the garage sometime. Um, but for people who are going to be using a blog, and this is what we're going to be encouraging people to do in this first unit zero, this is the ramp up, is to establish or decide if you have a blog um, that you're going to use it. And so we have a place under the top uh, menu here where it says connect and there's a, a getting set up site that um, I put together um, a lot through uh, experience in working with uh, my colleagues on connected courses and, um, and DML Hub. Some things to think about before you start like, like typing in your blog right away that we think are pretty um, important. So one of the questions is um, do I use a blog I already have if I'm a blogger or I want to use a new blog? So obviously if you've never blogged before, the answer should be easy. You're going to create a new one. But if you have one, you certainly can use it and there are ways you can use it um, so you can designate just content you want related to DML Commons. So if you are writing about cats or surfing, which is definitely interesting, maybe you don't want to send everything to um, the DML Commons site. So there's some information here about um, deciding whether you're going to use uh, an existing blog or create a new one. So in terms of picking a blog, and this is the question that people have, uh, somebody asked on Twitter if we're going to talk about um, Tumblr, there are a lot of options. And so um, the thing is, before you say, oh my god, do I use Blogger or WordPress or Tumblr, a couple things um, we want you to slow down to think about is to come up with an um, interesting name for your blog because you're generally going to come up, it's going to be part of the web address and you may want to think about something that may live outside of DML Commons. So if you create a blog and call it, you know, Howard's DML Commons Spring 2015, if he decides to use it, it's kind of a dated name. So think about um, the way you want your blog to be identified on the internet. It's going to be part of the URL or the web address. And it doesn't have to be literal, so it can be just something that's meaningful. You know, I use the word cog dog, which doesn't mean anything. It's just a word I made up, but it's something that I use on all my sites. So thinking about the URL that you want to be part of your blog is important because no matter what service you create, it's going to be an option that, that you have to enter. In terms of picking a blog a platform, and this is where a lot of people want to know which is better. It doesn't matter. You can use any of these. And in fact, if you use one and you try it out and you decide, I really don't think it works for me, you can actually move your stuff to another platform. And we can help you with that in the garage. We are pretty biased here uh, towards WordPress um, because we have a lot of experience in it. <clears throat> but it's not the only option out there. But you can get a self-hosted blog on WordPress.com. And that's generally the uh, recommendation that I would make. Blogger from Google works equally well, so if you do a lot of stuff in uh, the Google universe, it's created its option for you if you already have a Gmail account. You can create 
15 different blogs on Blogger. <coughs> Tumblr, too, which um, Jim talked about. Often people think of it not necessarily as a blogging platform, but it's an easy publishing platform. So generally, Tumblr is um, towards um, a series of media, <coughs> but you can also write in Tumblr. And Tumblr is a real simple, it's a beautiful editing experience, and it works very well for long-form writing as well. You don't see it as much, but it certainly can do. Um, if you really want to go down the route of completely reclaiming your domain, we can help you with that. You can get your own domain and install WordPress or crazy things like Drupal or Joomla. <coughs> there are a number of other hosted things like um, uh, Squarespace works. Weebly kind of works. Um, even we have um, someone who you can actually use Medium, which is sort of a new writing platform. The thing is, all these um, platforms, they need to have something called an RSS feed, which we'll get to. But this is a means that says every time that Jim writes something new on BavaTuesdays.com, we can say um, there's a certain address that we can say this will show that Jim has written something new, and that's what we connect to the DML common site. So you're going to create a blog, and then you're going to say, oh, my God, what do I do with this? So I'm going to encourage you not to focus so much on the beginning about getting the right theme or getting the menus right. More about it is just writing on a regular basis. Create posts. You can always change the look of the theme, and we can help you with that in the garage. So <clears throat> don't spend a lot of time on the beginning form worrying about the look. It can be very plain. It's more, it's more about writing something interesting. And now what happens is when you have the blog, uh, there's a couple steps that we're going to have you go through to connect it to the DML Commons site. Uh, we do recommend that you create a Twitter account. We're not going to force anybody to use Twitter, but it really is, um, in our experience, the best way to sort of be in uh, the network. So often, if you just want to share a link, uh, often Twitter is a kind of a better way, unless you're going to really expand on it than, than your blog, or just to ask for help. Uh, so when you tune into the DML Commons hashtag on Twitter, you kind of get a chance to sort of see what's going on right then in the moment. Uh, but what you're going to need is this thing about, uh, first of all, um, where your blog is. So if it's a blog totally um, devoted to DML Commons, it would just be the main address. If you are going to use an existing blog, you want to think about coming up with a tag or a category so you can mark which post should come in to DML Commons. So you may want to call it DML Hub or DML Commons. The category or tag name doesn't matter. Just something that you will use um, to uh, reference your blog. And then once you get to this part, you're ready to connect your blog. And this will take you to um, a form on the site where we'll ask you hard questions like your name, which hopefully you already know, your Twitter account. Um, again, if you don't want to create one, just make up a, a unique name. This is sort of like a handle that we use on the DML Commons site to identify your content. Uh, we ask your email only in case we have to contact you if there was a problem with your information. Um, for those in um, the two different strands, there's a, a strand on design research or professional pathways, and there's more information about this um, on the, the DML Commons site about what those are covering. If you're just kind of casually interested in DML Commons, pick one. It doesn't really matter. Pick one that sounds more interesting. And then when we get down to the part about where you put your blog. This is where we ask a question. So um, the easiest way um, to find this blog feed is if everything on your blog is DML Commons. So that's one blog that's all about DML Commons. So that would be the first button. If you are using an existing blog, the things you have to do get a little more complex, but we've explained them below. And you can see the uh, fields below change when I did that option. And if you're really confused about this, this is a new option in the garage. Just send me your, your blog feed, and we'll figure out the stuff for you. Um, so when you come to this form, it'll ask you some questions about the blog address and this mysterious thing called an RSS feed. Uh, it can sound um, kind of confusing if you've never heard it before. Um, so if you really are troubled, just create your blog, put the URL in there. And the last thing I want to indicate um, for you on the site is on the far right of the menus is the forums. This is where um, we are going to have um, a lot of discussions about um, uh, different things going on. So there is a, 
an entire series of um, discussion threads for DML Commons. Um, and then also um, the Blog Talk Garage now has its own. We have our own new garage, fellas. So when you come in here, this is a place to uh, ask your technical questions or maybe your, your uh, questions about um, setting up your blog or even just maybe conceptual, like I don't know if this is worth writing about or um, I'm trying to embed videos and it doesn't work or I wonder if you can do X and name something crazy. So um, this is the place that um, I will be sitting on my chair quite often um, listening for questions that come in. And generally when you come here, you're going to find uh, questions that other people have asked. And so this is another community space uh, for the DML uh, comments. So that's going to be um, uh, kind of the, the process is to spend some time, first of all, um, figuring out what kind of platform, where you're going to do it, set it up, um, write at least one thing on your blog. You know, don't leave it hanging at Hello World. Hello World is really boring. Um, so it could be an introduction. It could be just uh, maybe talk about you know what your interests are in uh, in the courses that you're taking. It could be just about um, another cat video that you just saw last week. So it's your space. You can do with it whatever you want, but make sure there's at least one uh, published post before you submit it uh, to the comments. Uh, so uh, any thoughts on the the tools and and the the bits and bobs, fellow uh, blog talk brothers? Well, I just got. I have to say that that it's it's not as complicated as it looks, and that uh, knowing the the simple bits to start with on the on a WordPress dashboard, which, which um, you're you're going to get a, a a lot of uh, help with from um, from Blog Talk, uh, is the is the way to go uh, when you're starting. And once you understand that there's just a, a couple of things that you need to to, to know about. You can explore. One of the things I really love about WordPress is all of the menus there. Um, you can look at those menus and figure out what to do. I think, for example, the difference between a a, a page and, and a post, and how to create a page or a post, and how to edit them are uh, like the first things that that you want to learn. But later on, those be can become very powerful. If you want to create pages. You can create a whole syllabus for a class. You can create a whole uh, kind of community resource by making menus and having those menus link to pages. You don't. Uh, it's really a way of creating a whole uh, website if you want. You just don't have to go that far to get started. Definitely good, good advice. And also, you know, it's funny. I never, I never look at it, and, and I'm surprised how few people use it in, in WordPress. There's this great contextual help, like right there in the top right, and I can't tell you how many times people write me and say, "How do I modify my menus?" And mm -hmm. it's like right there in front of you. So, and, and I don't think they do a, a good enough job about making that um, obvious. Because in fact, I've been using WordPress for like ten years, and, and I barely notice that it's there. Uh, so uh, most of the work I do is, is I'm a guy. I, I do custom engines in WordPress, so I do things to build uh, websites that aren't just blogs. So um, I can help you with everything from just picking a theme uh, to customizing it to, to doing some uh, of the basics. And so that, that's sort of my set of tools that I bring to this. Plus, I do this a lot. Um, we talk, a lot, again, a lot about WordPress, but it's not just WordPress. Anything will do. So you know, I've used Blogger, and I, I do use Tumblr myself, and I can help you um, with their um, again, the most dizzying thing is like when you're trying to pick a theme. It's like there's a billion of them, mm -hmm. and if a, if you're on WordPress.com, it's great because it's free, and they keep trying to sell you stuff. So make sure you click the free option. <laughs> uh, WordPress is always trying. I love WordPress, but WordPress.com is always trying to sell us stuff. I don't know, you know, that's how they they fund their business. But you don't have to buy the stuff. Um, you can certainly go a long way with the free option. And again, don't be too worried. You're not making a commitment, you know, for the rest of your life here. It's for a few weeks, and if it doesn't work out for you, you can try uh, something new. And again, there are ways to move your site from one platform to the other. Yeah, and I, it's really good advice. And I think the other thing to think about as you're starting a blog, as you're early on, uh, one of the things that gets always made me, I think, come back early on, because early on I was in and out, is 
you know, blog about something you're like really passionate about. We have a student at Mary Washington who started for a class, and that wasn't really like she was overly crazy about that. But she collects postcards from all over the world, and she has people send her postcards all over the world, and she's crazy about that. And so she maybe posted three times for her class, but she has over a hundred postcards that she's posted about that have kind of defined her and who she is. And so maybe blogging does or doesn't work out for you as a researcher. We hope it does, and we hope you frame it. But I think anyone who has any interest, and I think everybody has an interest, um, this is a really interesting way. And it's a site, right? Blog. I think Alan brought it up earlier on. Like It's associated with cat videos or bad politics. But it's really just a way of publishing and getting your stuff out there online. And use this opportunity to explore how to use and kind of do that in a whole range of things. And, you know, hopefully you'll be blogging about your scholarship and your research. But I tend to think everybody has something that they're passionate about. I mean, the yarn committee, the yarn community in blogging is awesome, right? Like the Ravelry and figuring out how they do that. I mean, it really depends upon a whole bunch of things, but the idea is your network, whether it be disciplinary, whether it be research, is out there, and you're literally just a post and a link away, and a click, and an embed. And, and you know, one of the best things you can do is, is, of course, read a bunch of blogs to see how the way people go about these approaches, uh, because there's a lot of ways to inform you, and you'll find that people have uh, forms of, of uh, writing. I mean, some people, like Jim says, a student probably just wrote in images, and you can write in just images. Some people just go on and on in text, and text is not bad if you're interesting. I mean, I, w I will take, like, a screen full or five screens full of just plain text if you're writing something interesting. Now, I prefer pictures, and I like links to things that are relevant, um, but you kind of, you know, you go through these different phases of figuring out this is a comfortable way for me to write, or this is a way I feel like expressing myself, and it will grow. It's, it's a whole process of, as in everything writing, of finding your, your blog voice, uh, and that's, that's a process. It's not something you get right away. So when I go back and look at my first blog post, or even stuff from a few years ago, uh, I, I've changed, and, and that's what you're going to be doing uh, as researchers. And, you know, one of these questions that are going to come up is like, you know, um, what's the mix between, you know, as Jim was talking about, or um, I'm sorry, click, um, between my personal um, stuff that interests me and maybe uh, stuff that's professional? Is it bad to mix personal and professional? You know, what if, you know, what if I write something that's embarrassing and, you know, or, you know, and that's the, the big fear that we put out of people about going on the public web is like something gets embarrassed and I go for a job interview and that postcard comes up. Well, if that's the only thing you have out there is that one postcard that you're embarrassed about, that could be a problem. But fill the space with the things that make you look good. And that's what having this space does for you, is you're asserting um, sort of your own identity on the web and not leaving it up to Facebook or Google or Twitter to shape what comes up when people look for you on the web. So that's why I say write a lot, because you want to flood the Internet with you. You know, and... And often, I find it very valuable after I've written something to then go look for images that, that really are relevant, not, not just sort of connected. And, you know, Wikipedia ha has a huge uh, list of public domain images and, and, and Flickr and Google Image Search. You can, you can find um, Creative Commons licensed images, public domain images really easily, it's, I think, an increasingly important skill to know how to, to have a, a, a kind of augmentation of your, your text um, with images. And I, I have absolutely no documentation on this, but Kevin Kelly once told me that, that, uh, that there's some research that shows that if you're going to publish something and you want people to pay attention to it, you will multiply your, your attention if you put a picture of a human being on it somewhere. That's really interesting, and I, I generally my motive is I don't write until I've got an image for my post. Like it's a metaphor or just something that not always literally um, trying to frame what I'm writing about. But I don't start writing until I have an image. That's just my way. Uh, there, there is another reason to have that. You notice on that front um, masonry display of the DML Commons site, it's a lot of text. So the tweets are just text, and the blog posts are just text. 
if you include an image in your post, you will get an icon in your blog post, and it'll stand out. It'll have that cool image, that first image in your post. So we encourage you to think about using images. I, I do a lot of workshops on finding uh, images, and I can definitely help people. Uh, I've never failed uh, to find an image for a blog post, uh, usually within like three minutes. But I have a little bit of practice. It is a, a practice. Bit. It is. I mean, it's a habit, right? I mean, that's the other thing. It's a habit. And you get into the habit of mind of, of sharing your ideas regularly. I, I think it's actually a good habit. You know, I mean, it can be addictive. But I won't give you the medicine because <laughs> I felt like Howard was like, stop with the medicine, man. Let me give some honey to that. You know, but look at his shirt. How is he not going to give honey to everybody? <laughs> So, so what we're going to do is hopefully um, we're seeding the interest for people to get started. This is a two-week. Uh, we're unit zero. We're, we're even before <laughs> the thing starts. We are zero. That's all we are. We're, we're the guys in the garage. So um, next, uh, for unit one, you're going to get the real people coming on doing. We, will be a, we kind of always like to set this up. Jim and I did this in DS106. We used to call it boot camp. You yeah. give people a chance just to practice and, and get their sort of their, their feet wet in, in the blogging um, so then they can actually get to the, the writing about the work that they're doing. Uh, so we encourage you to start now, uh, get your blog set up. Um, if you have any trouble, um, you can always uh, find me on Twitter as uh, at CogDog and there is the, of course, the forums that, that we showed about. Um, but just try a few short things. Um, look around. Uh, there's also a place on the site um, under um, I'm not already forgetting where it is, under um, Connect, where you can see a list of all the blogs um, that have been added to the site. So right now, there's only a handful of blogs on the site, because it's mainly the, the ones we've been setting on, but there's already actually 12 of them uh, within the mix, so there are already people who have blogs connected uh, to DML Hub. Uh, next, in our next video, I'll show you a few other things. Because the thing is, once there's like 40 or maybe 100 you know, blogs connect in there, it's insane. And you can't read it all by looking at the website. So there are some other ways that uh, we can tell you that will help you sensibly manage um, that blog flow, give you an easy way to scan all the information uh, that's coming in there. And then if you're really like, if you're looking for something um, to read or follow. Uh, every time I make a site, I always throw a random into the mix. So there, there's a link on the site where you can see a random blog post that someone has written. And uh, an important part of this community aspect is not just writing and publishing on your blog, it's reading and commenting um, in someone else's blog. Uh, because A, you know, it helps you uh, kind of um, support each other, but generally I get ideas from reading other people's blogs that, that, that I can bring back to my own and so it's, it's just worth it um, to do more than say nice blog post or click a link button uh, but give some constructive uh, uh, criticism or add something to it um, because when you start getting comments it's going to be like oh my god they found me interesting I'm going to go comment on someone else's blog and we want that to happen we want you to get kind of in that fever of um, giving back uh, to this community and you know you don't get a community with everybody just sitting on their front porch talking to themselves. Yes, or everybody in their own garage with no car. <laughs> so you have to bring your car, your car in. It's lonely in the garage. <laughs> for it to get overhauled. Right? No, any, I, uh, any more closing thoughts? Well, we could talk about blogging all day. I mean, like, oh, yeah. because... Blogging changed my life. Before, I was yeah. a degenerate. Now I'm a professional. <laughs> People have me come on, you know, large institution foundations to talk about blogging. I have a rock. You're still, you're still using the 2011 theme. <laughs> I'm still using the 2011 theme. <laughs> Not like my brother. He got all fancy. <laughs> Just that's also be careful how fancy you get with your theme because I I found I don't know nothing personal else, it does affect the quality of your blogging. It probably <laughs> comes down a little bit. <laughs> that's a matter of opinion. Not the quantity, <laughs> just the quality. <laughs> it's, Maybe it's next week we can do this uh, more like a a, a call-in show and use the. Uh, 
Twitter hashtag for people who are inspired by today and setting things up to ask ask questions in real time as as we're doing it. Yeah, I, I think what we should do is we'll open up the Hangout and people can come in. They can they can drive their blog into the garage, and we'll put it on the lift and we'll give them some suggestions and we'll we'll give them a tune up right here. Right. What do you think? I yeah. It. I love it. And I just, I, don't, I mean, one thing, I, I, I don't want to get off, is has there been word that, that Blogger is basically going to gonna fold? Like they're not going to support Blogger going forward? Like there's Who been knows word, with Google? Yeah, Google yeah. might, just as a heads up, and I don't know, but maybe do a search on the, on the web, whether there's been like people who got, there was an announcement that made people fear that Google Blogger was going, Blogger was going away at some point. Boy, that's hard. It's hard to imagine, but you know, Google has sort of this, you know, experience of creating great things and then yanking them from under our feet. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and you know, it, it does seem like they want to push people towards. Um, I mean, even you know, there's talk of you know, Google Plus communities are supposed to be some change that people are are, are worried about. Um, so. Uh, we'll, we'll look into that, uh, but you know you're definitely probably in good shape for the the uh, meantime. Yeah. Bloggers, are, I don't mind Blogger. I, I just uh, you know I, WordPress is just a, a tad more flexible, and you can do a tad more with it. But you know there are great bloggers out there, and um, if, if you do have experience in one, and you know want to sort of see what another environment is like, this is a great opportunity to try Tumblr for a few weeks and see what you can do with it. So that's how you sort of learn, um, and hopefully you get the sense that really it doesn't matter what platform it is. Just just write some interesting stuff. Darn it, <laughs> darn it. Yeah, no, that's right. Absolutely. So I think uh, we're gonna let Jameson jump in. I think we're done here, brothers. I, it's it's always fun to be in the garage with you, and um, and you know you never know what's gonna happen, right? We didn't even get greasy yet. <laughs> so. Um, we're going to be back uh, next week, same same day, same time, 10, 10 a.m. Pacific, um, 1 p.m. Eastern on, on Monday the 30th. Absolutely. And and be prepared to drive your blog into the garage. But, but, but don't blog like my brother. Don't blog like my brother. <laughs> don't, well, actually, you should blog like my brother. <laughs> <laughs>